Hey folks, Lucas here. Last time I completed the nose cone that holds the lens. Now it's time to make the main housing for the camera. It's a simple box design with several features added to accommodate the lens mount, film advance wheels, and tripod mounts. For the first camera I made, I used a more complicated method than what I'm going to focus on today. But I wanted to briefly show the process to highlight some of the advantages and disadvantages, and why I decided to switch things up. I started with a flat sheet of stock, and using a shot made D bit, I cut several V grooves across the piece. These grooves correspond to the bends that will be made later. This process was always very time consuming, as it required the parts to be re-indexed for each cut. I also had to take several passes, because my D bit isn't very well suited for deep cuts. Once the grooves were cut, I used a coping saw to cut off the corners and filed away the leftover material. I gave the part a nice scrub, tend and flux the joints, and then folded the sides up. I checked that all the sides are square before moving on. Brazing the seams is where the majority of problems would begin. I always had problems getting the solder to flow, and if it does flow, it doesn't offer a very good hold. And more often than not, the aluminum starts to melt before the joints are complete. And that's exactly what happened to this one. So I decided to splurge and get one of these fancy TIG machines. A welder can open up a lot of doors for a home gamer like me, and it completely changes the way I can approach a project. So I decided to scrap everything I was doing and remake the body by welding. Instead of using one piece of sheet metal that I bend, I decided to go for bar stock that I can cut to length and weld together. I'm using 1 8 inch thick aluminum. For the front I'm using a 4 inch wide piece and for the sides 1 and a half inch wide aluminum. I mark the pieces to length and using a chop saw I cut them down to size. These woodworking saws are great for cutting aluminum. It goes through it like butter. Next, I mark out the holes for the film advanced hardware. These need to be perfectly aligned on the top and bottom, so I created a jig that keeps everything where it should be during welding. I first drill a 3mm hole through both pieces, and then remove one and drill a half inch hole through one of them. I do this for both sides. Using a router, I chamfer the edges that will be welded. Because I'm using butt joints instead of outside corner joints, these chamfered edges will help me get better penetration. Now it's time to clean the metal. Prep work is very important for welding, so I scrub all the joints with a scotch brite pad and then wipe them down with acetone. Now it's time to assemble the jig for welding. The idea of the jig is to line the holes on the top and bottom plate and keep the sides nice and square. The welding process can now begin. I start by tacking all the corners and then work down the two long sides. I feel compelled to state that I am by no means an expert when it comes to welding. I have only been doing this for about two weeks and I am sure my technique has at least one expert bashing on this keyboard. But with time my welds will get better. I believe my skills have now passed into the usable stage, where I am not melting through everything and dipping my electrode every two seconds. And the end results I can achieve, while not visibly stunning, are passable. That being said, I am continuously working on improving my skills, and with enough time, I'm sure I'll be able to trade punches with the big boys.
For this next step, I hop back over to the router table. This is where I'll cut off all the excess aluminum. I'm using a simple flush trim bit. This bit is used to trim veneers and laminate glued onto wood. The bearing on the top will keep the teeth from cutting into the part, just removing anything that is sticking out from the sides. Even though a router isn't designed to cut aluminum, it seems to make quick work of it and with only a few minutes I have a perfectly square box. The router doesn't leave a good finish though, but a few minutes with some 100 grit sandpaper makes the sides perfectly smooth. Later I'll bring it to a nice high polish, but for now the surface finish is acceptable. The last thing I need to do on the router table is clean up the back of the box. To do this, I created a simple jig that the box can be clamped to and then run across a standard half inch bit. This process is much simpler and easier than using my mill. With the box now complete, I need to cut a large hole in the front to accept the nose cone we made in the last episode. This hole will be about 68mm across, so far larger than any drill bit I have. But I have a few tricks up my sleeve. First, I mark the center of the hole and use strap clamps to mount it to my mill. Using an annular cutter, I make a half inch hole in the center. I then mount a rotary table. A simple trick I learned for mounting a rotary table is to mount a taper in the mill and lower it into the matching taper of the rotary table, assuming it has one. This method isn't perfect, but for applications like this it's well within tolerance. I then use the half inch threads on the other side of my taper to attach the body using the hole I just made. By offsetting the x-axis and spinning the rotary table, I can now make a perfect hole of any size. Because the part isn't very securely held in place, I take two light passes. Everything worked just to plan, except for my math. I didn't appropriately account for the size of the cutting bit, so my hole is too small. But thankfully, I'll have a second chance to get it right. I clamp down the body for a second time and attach a boring bar. I can now open the hole to the correct measurement. Finally, it's time to mount the nose cone. As you can see here, the opening I made is just a tiny bit smaller than the nose cone. This was done intentionally. What I'm going to do now is kind of like lapping. I wrap the nose cone in sandpaper and start twisting it. I check often to make sure I didn't go too far. When the hole in the body is only a few thousands too small, I can permanently bond the two parts. To do this, I use a torch to heat up the body. Off camera, I have the cone sitting under ice cold running water. What is happening is the body will expand by a small amount and the cone will shrink by a small amount. When they are brought together, the temperature will equalize, causing the body and nose cone to be very tightly bound together. I quickly check that the top of the nose cone is level. And to check the strength of the bond, I give it a few good whacks with a mallet.
With the body now completed, I wanted to address some of the mistakes and imperfections that are a result of the welding. Like I said, this is a new process for me, so I can't ignore these problems if I'm to get any better. The most glaring problem is the top seam that came open when I clamped the nose cone in. It looks like I didn't get good penetration here. I don't think it will be an issue though. Once the camera is completed, this surface will be covered up. Furthermore, the clamping force that this part saw when attaching the nose cone is far greater than anything we'll see again. There's also a lot of porosity on both the top and bottom. I believe this is due to contamination of various kinds. Moving forward, I'll be much more aware of cleanliness in the hopes to minimize these sorts of problems. On the inside, there's a lot of what looks to be blowout and wall thinning. This is from poor heat control. Seeing as it's on the walls and not so much on the front part, I think changing the angle of my torch and focusing more heat onto the large front plate could minimize this and also lead to stronger welds. But even with all these errors, the completion of this part marks a big milestone in my skills. I'll be pulling the welder out several more times before the end of this project, and I'm excited to see my welds get better and better. But for now, I'm calling this part finished. Next time I'll be making the top cap. That means I'll be casting and milling. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to help you out. And with that, I hope to see you next time.